Are you thinking of having a home battery installed in your loft or attic? Well, if you live in the UK, you might want to watch this video because official electrical installation guidance is changing to strongly advise against that given the heightened fire risk. And even if you live outside the UK, it's still worth watching as this kind of guidance could make its way into other countries. Hi, I'm Gary and welcome back to my channel, Gary Does Solar. A few days ago, the British Standards Institution released new guidance for the electrical installation of battery energy storage systems for use in dwellings. That's home batteries to you and I, and it sparked considerable debate across social media. So what's all the fuss about? Well, here in the UK, people tend to have their home battery installed in their garage if they have one, or a less used room in the house, for example, the utility room, or under the stairs, or even up in the loft or attic space. But this new guidance is pretty clear about where home batteries should and should not be installed. And the guidance says that they should not be installed in lofts. Let's have a read. Section 6.5 is the pertinent section, protection against fire. 6.5.1, where practicable, storage batteries shall be installed outdoors. So the guidance is stating right off the bat that home batteries should ideally be installed outdoors if possible. And where it is not practicable to install storage batteries outdoors, batteries shall only be installed indoors at a location. A. Not precluded by section 655. Let's take a look at section 655 then. Batteries shall not be installed at any of the following locations. Then there's a list of locations, for example rooms in which persons are intended to sleep. That's sensible. But later in the list, voids, roof spaces or lofts. So there you have it. Home batteries are required not to be installed in lofts according to this guidance. Let's go back to section 651. B, with ventilation according to 654. Okay, we should take a look at that section. All indoor locations which contain storage batteries shall have fresh air ventilation to outdoors. That's interesting. If your home battery is going to be mounted under the stairs, for example, does it have fresh air ventilation? Unlikely. And even if your battery is going into a garage, does it have fresh air ventilation? My batteries are installed in my garage and I changed from an up and over to a roller door a few years ago. So I think I'll need to look into that. Okay, back to section 651 again. C, with fire resisting separation where required by 653. Let's take a look at that section. Any indoor location in which storage batteries or storage battery enclosures are installed shall have fire resisting separation from indoor locations. So if your home battery is going into a garage, it's likely to already have that fire resisting separation. But what if your battery is going into a utility room or cupboard under the stairs? This new guidance requires fire resisting separation from the rest of the home. And that's quite a big deal and might not even be achievable. Now some people will say, yeah, but this document is only guidance, it's not a legal requirement. That's true, it clearly states that here. This publicly available specification is not to be regarded as a British standard, but a pass can be considered for further development as a British standard or constitute part of the UK input into the development of a European or international standard. So although it's only guidance today, it could well be a legal requirement in British, European and even international standards before long. Now that's not to say that everything you read in this document will translate directly into law. There will still be a lot of consultation carried out. But given the list of organisations who contributed to this version, I'm not sure the text will change all that much. You can see a couple of home battery manufacturers listed here, including Tesla, and also the National Fire Chiefs Council. Many in the industry would hope for legislation that allows for homes of all shapes and sizes to have batteries installed in them, ideally in a choice of locations, so that everyone has the opportunity to take part in a sustainable future. But organisations like the National Fire Chiefs Council care more about keeping you alive. And with battery capacities becoming ever larger over the last few years, having that extra weight in your loft, for example, could be a risk to life if it falls through, over and above catching fire in the first place. So what are the implications of this new guidance in respect that it might eventually become law? We can consider the implications for both new installations going forward and also existing installations. Let's look at new installations first. Home battery installers will need to make a policy decision, I guess, 
Do they continue their work respecting all the legal requirements, for example BS 7671, or do they now also take into account this new guidance? Some will and some won't, so you might find yourself limited in the market regarding choice of installer, potentially leading to an increased installation cost. What about home insurance? Home insurance providers stay informed about the latest guidance and legislation, and this latest guidance will not have gone unnoticed. They may well adjust their policies and coverage terms to reflect the perceived increased risk associated with battery installations outside of the new guidance. And that would mean higher premiums or more stringent safety requirements to secure that coverage. So although insurance companies are not directly enforcing the new guidance, they do play an instrumental role in encouraging adherence by indirectly influencing homeowner decisions. Let's now look at the implications for existing installations. The good news is that any new legal requirements around electrical installations are typically not retrospective, but home insurance companies are unlikely to differentiate between new and existing installations given the risk is the same. There's another aspect to consider too, and it applies to both cases. Batteries typically come with warranties of around 10 years, and whilst it's encouraging to see EV batteries lasting a lot longer than expected, you may still be faced with changing your battery after say 10 to 15 years. And so any guidance published today is likely to be law by then, meaning that if you have to relocate your replacement battery, you may also have to relocate other parts of your setup at the same time. So it's certainly worth thinking ahead. I get it that new guidance like this is not helpful in enabling everyone to play their part in a renewable future. For example, around 25% of the houses in the UK are terraced, and the loft might be the only viable option for a home battery. And some of you will argue that because home batteries made using LFP chemistry are inherently safer than those using NMC, guidance and future legislation should take this into account. Maybe it will, but remember the purpose of such guidance is to ensure safety in your home and to keep you alive in the event of a fire. What's your view on all this then? And will it affect your decision making with regards to getting and citing a home battery? Please let me know in the comments. And if you like this kind of content, there are a few ways you can support my work. Check them out in the end credits. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.